If you were to walk in the front doors of my school right now, you'd likely pass one of our many principals or police officers. If you have to look down to say hi, you probably ran into one of our officers. But if you have to look up, then you're probably speaking to one of our principals. If you were to walk into any high school, you'll often find that the principals are generally taller and more old, much older than the rest of the people associated with leadership there, like teachers or staff. This has even been found to predict elections. A 1975 book called First Impressions, The Psychology of Encountering Others notes, elevator shoes anyone? One factor which has a far reaching influence on how people perceive others is height. But why is that? This is because height and maturity seen in other people often gives us a perception of power. From 1900 to 1968, the man elected US president was always the taller of the two candidates, Richard Nixon being slightly shorter than George McGovern. A 1978 book titled The Psychology of Person Identification states they also say that every president of the United States elected since the turn of the 20th century has been the taller of the two candidates, with Jimmy Carter being the exception. A 1999 book repeats Survival of the Prettiest by Nancy Etkoff. Since 1976, only two presidents, James Madison and Benjamin Harrison, have been below average height. For years, observers have noted that the taller of the two party candidates tends to win with this increasing even more after the creation of televised presidential debates. But in a society that's run through Zoom, YouTube, television, and online broadcasting, how does height affect who we place in leadership positions today? Whether we realize it or not, many of us make split-second judgments about people from facial appearance. Given the reliance on facial appearance in making social judgments, it's fair to assume that features that indicate height can have a huge influence on the selection of leadership. But this concept applies to more than just politics. This applies to the corporate world. In the US population, about 14.5% of all men are six feet or over. But among CEOs, that number is 58%. A study also found that people tend to prefer candidates with facial features that allude to height during times of war <clears throat> and shorter candidates during times of peace. The exact same is shown with masculinity, as a more masculine face structure is preferred in a leader during conflict, while a more feminine face is preferred during periods of peace. These findings suggest that facial appearance not only influences leadership selection, but also predicts it. New research has found that taller men and women are more often assumed to be more dominant and intelligent, with the correlation being even stronger when shown to an audience without their bodies in view. So how do people still vote for the taller candidate? just from seeing their face. Recent research suggests that height can be assumed from looking at a person's face. A facial cue that's associated with height is facial elongation. Take for instance, a recent study that was done which demonstrated that facial width to height ratio, also known as bizygomatic face width, predicts leadership success in businesses and achievement driving US presidents. See, as we get older, our lower jaws develop, they become longer, a little less round and more oval. Our facial width to height ratio correlates with our perception of dominance and aggression in people because of it, our association with height. This makes us believe they're more suited for leadership. Another physical trait that's really commonly connected to our leaders is facial maturity. People who are baby faced are generally assumed to be less competent and less likely to be chosen and respected in those positions. How we choose our leaders is also influenced by facial masculinity because the more masculine features someone has, the more likely they are to be selected. Past studies have found that these split-second judgments based on seeing a person's face have been able to predict the outcome of elections in the U.S. Congress, governor, and president. The same experiment found that they could predict voting outcomes in the United Kingdom, Canada, Austria, Ireland, Italy, and Japan. They did the exact same experiment with children, with results nearly identical to the adults. It's important as a society to take the time to form our own opinions and truly take the time to go beyond what you can see on the surface. We tend to rely solely on what's publicized and what's spoon fed to us, whether it be social media, television, or even our own opinions. When's the last time you dug deeper? A 2019 survey showed that 39% of Americans could name the three branches of government, with 84% claiming to be able to, and 22% being unable to name any at all. But in the exact same survey, over 60% of respondents could accurately name their civil rights. With the media being a large advocate for many civil issues, it's no surprise that as a society, our focus on social issues is changing. But with the larger spread of information, it's absolutely essential that we do just as much of our own research as we take in from the media, especially in regards to choosing our leadership. Maybe in 10 years, our principles will look different. 
or maybe we'll have a whole new political party. But for now, it all depends on our split-second judgments and where they take us.